Hello students, in this video we'll discuss several important vector identities involving divergence and curl. Let's recall that the divergence of a vector field is going to be the x derivative of v1 plus the y derivative of v2 plus the z derivative of v3. And the curl of a vector field v is exactly just the determinant i, j, k, the x derivative, the y derivative, the z derivative of v1, v2, and v3. That's the definition of curl. So this is divergence, this is curl. The first identity we're going to look at is we're going to compute the divergence of a curl. So identity one, prop one. The divergence of the curl of a vector field, if I do the divergence of a curl, I get the zero scalar. So let's see why. So let's do this. So I have the divergence. Here's the proof. The divergence of what's the curl going to be. The curl is going to be partial v3, partial y, partial v3, partial y, minus partial z, partial v2, partial v2, partial z. That's the first entry. Then the second entry in the curl is going to be what? Partial v1, partial z, partial v1, partial z. And then minus partial v3, minus partial v3, partial x. That's the next entry. The final entry is going to be what? The final entry is going to be the k entry, which is going to be partial v2, partial x, minus partial v1, partial y. I'm going to do the divergence of this thing. So we're going to do the x derivative. So let's carefully do this. So what we have, we will have the x derivative of this first term over here. So this will be, let's do it like this, v3 with a y derivative and an x derivative and then minus v2 with a z derivative and an x derivative. Then I'll do the y derivative of this thing over here, so that's going to be a plus v1. I'm going to do a z derivative of that and then a y derivative of that. And then minus v3, I'm going to do a what? I'm going to do an x derivative and a y derivative. The order doesn't matter. And then finally, with this thing, I'm going to do a z derivative of this last entry. So I'll have a v2, then I'm going to do an x and then a z. And then minus v1, and then I'm going to have a y and then a what? A y and then a z. Now let's carefully look over here. So if I look at this term over here, this v1 has a z and a y. This has a y and a z. Those terms cancel. If I look at this term over here, this v3 with a y and an x, I have a v3 with a y and an x, opposite signs. Those cancel out over there. And finally, if I look at this term over here, that's a v2 with an x and a z. I have a v2 with an x and a z. That pairs off with this term over here, equal and opposite signs. So this is equal to 0. This calculation was fairly long to do. We'll see using the permutation symbol and some vector no notation that this becomes much easier to do later. All right, let's look at the next proof. So that's the proof. So the divergence of a curl is equal to 0. Next, let's do the curl of a gradient. So here's prop 2. Prop 2 says that if I do the curl of the gradient of a scalar function, this will be the 0 vector. So let's prove that. So remember what the gradient is. The gradient, in Cartesian coordinates at least, is fx, fy, fz. So let's do the curl of that. So the curl of this gradient is going to be what? Determinant i, j, and k. Partial x, partial y, partial z. Those are operators. fx, fy, fz. Let's look at the i entry. What will the i entry be? The i entry is going to be the y derivative of z. So it's going to be f, z, y minus the z derivative of y. It's going to be f, y, z, i hat. Then the j, I'll put a negative for the j and do the order in the right way. So I have an f, z, x, f, z, x minus f, x, z, f, x, z. That's my j entry. And finally, what's my k entry going to be? My k entry is going to be f, y, x, f, y, x minus f, x, y, k hat. And of course, by the equality of mixed partials by Euler's theorem, all of these terms are 0. And we just get the what? We just get the 0 vector. 0 i, 0 j, 0 k. So two very important identities of divergence and curl. If we do the divergence of a curl, we get 0. If I do the curl of a gradient, I get 0. There are other vector identities which are more complicated than this, which will require more advanced notation, which we'll see in future videos. Thank you very much.